Okay, here's the next section on dump Trump, its positions. First item on the list, U.S.-China trade reform. I have some understanding of this topic because I used to be there. Okay, you don't really have to have been there to understand it, but it helps because it, once you're in China, you get the mindset of China, China. And that's something that, you know, Trump fundamentally doesn't understand. I'm not saying he's wrong, but his prescription about what to do um, about the Ch China trade imbalance, basically the idea that too many things are being made in China and we're buying too much of it, so we end up owing China money and they sort of have us over a barrel. That problem is really um, quite complicated. It goes back for about 100 years. And we caused the problem. Trump doesn't seem to understand that. What you'll hear him talk about here is basically the bad Chinese and Frankly, the way he talks, you'll never solve the problem, okay? You just, you cannot talk to China, Russia, the Arabs, the way this guy talks. You know, I'm pretty brash. I have a persona that's known for being, what do you want to call it, confrontational. But I'm just a YouTube person. I'm just a voice in the wilderness. I am not president of the United States. If I were president of the United States, I cannot talk as president of the United States the way I do here. Can't. He's acting as if he was just a YouTuber. That's not what a president can do. You cannot be that way, even if it's your personality, as a, as a statesman. As a statesman, you have to show the respect of state A to state B, even if state B is your enemy and you don't like them, you cannot get a conversation started until you show certain base respect. And each culture has its own idea of what constitutes respect. And this kind of position here will guarantee that whatever idea he's got, China won't accept, especially China. Because you have to, even though it's hypocritical, and they know it's hypocritical, you have to do what's called um, saving face. It's part of their culture, and it goes back 3,000 years. You aren't going to change it tomorrow. That's the big problem with America is that we're recognized as being, in many ways, you know, fresh-faced and honest and blah, 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 nice things. But we are also recognized as being very rude. I can get away with it to some extent, and I, it's a, it's, I'm doing it on purpose to be rude in YouTube. And a lot of people tell me that I shouldn't be that way, and I understand why they say that. In real life, and especially in the function of representing one country to another, you can't afford to be like that. You really can't. Now, the American kids who are supporting Trump love it that he's so rude and ill-informed, because he's just like them. Okay, you don't want your president to be just like you. You want him to be better than you. So A, being rude and nasty like this is not going to get him what he's going to say he wants to do to China, because China just is not going to respond to that. And B, um, he really doesn't have the right answer. So let's go through the issues. I'm going to let you read a lot of this. Basically, he's saying that, and he's right, he's right in a lot of what he says here. January 2000, Clinton boldly promised China's inclusion in WTO as good for America. And then he, all these promised that this would really help. Okay? But China gains no new market access to the United States. Okay. It is. Trump's criticism is that nothing that President Clinton said came true. He's right. We sold, oh, 
We sold our secrets. We gave away so much to China that pretty much everything that Nixon tried to accomplish, let's call it, got cheapened. It was really bad. Clinton was really bad. Both Clinton. Hillary would be bad for China. I'm not sure if she's going to follow the same position as her husband. And Bill Clinton, like Hillary, like Obama, is centrist. Trump is also a centrist. They're really just two sides of the same coin, these people, when it comes to foreign policy especially. Okay? But Bill Clinton really did sell out the United States when he brought China into the World Trade Organization. That was what China wanted. It was all win for them. And I don't know any game we got out of it. And the really important thing to understand here is it's because of what you see highlighted in blue that not all, but a lot of our current dilemma exists. Because we wanted the deal so that we could get cheaper products and we could export our labor overseas to China and therefore keep inflation down and therefore keep the cost of living down so that under Clinton and of course under Obama and Bush too for that matter it would be cheaper to live in the United States. This was basically a way to undercut our own labor force. We needed to do that because the costs were so high and in part the costs are so high because the regulations are so high. It's not so much the taxes that are high to hurt business and people. It's the regulations, the cost of just monitoring whether you fit and comport with the regulations like Environmental Protection Agency, um, the Department of, they call it, got another name for it now, but Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. There's so many regulations and government agencies that even, you know, your mom and pop business has to be worried about. We can't afford the expense. And so when that kind of stuff happens, where do we cut costs? We cut it by trying to hire cheaper labor because that's the only place we got left we can cut. See, the, 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 big de the big devil that is government, that the Democrats have basically wrapped around us and strangling us, is twofold. It's taxes, all right, but that's nothing compared to the regulations. Obamacare is a bunch of regulations. But long before Obamacare, we had all this other nonsense about protecting the minnow in its habitat. And that costs thousands upon thousands of jobs. Okay, so the human habitat is wrecked because there's not enough money to feed your kids. In order to protect the minnow that nobody eats or wants anyhow. In other words, in the great food chain of life, the minnow doesn't mean anything. You know, life dies. Species end and start. Why, who, who told us that we're supposed to stop a species from dying? Who, who said that that's divine or holy or good? We're interfering with natural the natural way of things. Same thing with all that global warming garbage. Okay? We're trying to stop a process that is natural to the earth. Okay? So blue there is partly caused really by very many external factors. Chiefly of our own making. We're the ones who made the United States too litigious. We're the ones who made the United States too regulated. We're the ones who therefore made being an employee in the United States an extremely expensive proposition. They don't have the regulations in China that we do. They don't have the costs, of course, that we do. And actually, in many ways, our taxes are higher. Depends. Okay? So, you know, Clinton was basically saying, oh, goody, if we sign this deal with China, 
and we'll be able to uh, cheapen our labor. And that's pretty much what happened, except what that means is we became more dependent on China as a result. So now we still have our two high regulations instead of solving the problem properly by reducing our regulations and therefore reducing our costs in this country. We still have our high regulations. In fact, they've gotten worse, especially under Obama. And I'm not saying that that's his fault. It's just under his watch. And at the same time, we've got, you know, we're more beholden to China than ever. If China stopped allowing us to purchase stuff from it, our economy will probably collapse very quickly. Okay, I'm not, you know, how quickly, I don't know, but it would be really bad. Okay, so none of what Clinton promised came true. Yeah. But you'll notice all the stuff that I just said, he's not paying attention to that. Since China joined the WTO, Americans have witnessed the closure of, and this is, he's just being dishonest there. Since China joined the WTO, Americans have witnessed the closure of more than 50,000 factories and the loss of tens of millions of jobs. He's trying to say there that it's all because we joined the WTO since we let China. In other words, all of the closure of all those factories and all those jobs is strictly and solely due to China's joining the WTO. That's not true. You wouldn't even know how to, how to measure how much the impact was. He's basically saying, it's, it's kind of like saying, today is Tuesday and I saw three red cars. So because it's Tuesday, there are three red cars. huh? That's the kind of argument he's making. It's ridiculous. This is not a thinker. Okay, I don't know who's responsible for him making the money, but it can't be him. He must have people around him who can think. At least in terms of being able to build hotels and stuff. Or whoever wrote this for him, because he sure didn't write it. You know, they wrote it keying off him. They don't know anything. It was not a good deal for America, and it's a bad deal now. Yeah, that's true, but for the reasons I just explained to you, not for his reasons. This is not why the WTO is bad. Because this is not the result of China's joining WTO. The problem of China joining WTO is that what it did is it allowed us to um, substitute a real fix that we needed to create in this country and shunt it off over to China so we don't have to fix our own problems. That's what's really wrong. And he's not diagnosing the problem correctly. He's blaming it on China. Now, don't you think China will know? That it's not to blame for our problems of overregulation since the Chinese don't overregulate either. Okay? So it is typical of how politicians in Washington failed our country. Yeah, but not for the reasons he's stating. He's saying that because we did the deal with WTO, that we lost all those jobs. No. We did the deal with WTO because we didn't want to have the jobs here. And it isn't those jobs. It isn't all the factories that closed and all the jobs that got lost during the period. You can't attribute it to that. You can attribute it to regulation and other factors that had nothing to do with WTO. All right. WTO was the, the, the result of the problem of us having overregulation and a bunch of other things. We This is part of what we tried to use as a solution to other problems in this country. Okay? So the WTO is not to blame, but our overregulation and not fixing the problems inside our own country is to blame. He doesn't know that. And then he blames the politicians because, you know, he wants to say what you want to hear. The most important component of our China policy is leadership and strength at the negotiating table. Well, actually, no. The most important component of our China policy is to know what the hell 
kind of relationship we need to have with China and what the hell kind of relationship we need to stop having. That's what Nixon tried to do. Is he wanted to create a rift between Russia and China. That's why he went over to China and that did create the rift. And as a result, then it's like, okay, now where do we want to take this relationship? What do they want? What do we want? It's not our leadership and strength at the negotiating table. We have to know what we want. That's not a negotiation. That's an internal discussion. In other words, let's say you and I were going to negotiate a business deal. Before you and I sit down, you got to go off by yourself and I got to go off by myself. And you have to determine what do you want in, in doing a deal with me? What do I want in doing a deal with you? Negotiating is after you know what you want. And this is a guy who wrote the art of the deal, right? Well, he sure doesn't know what it is. Or whoever wrote this for him never read the book. You can't negotiate until you know what you want. It's crazy. Okay, there it goes. We've been too afraid to protect and advance American interests and challenge China to live up to its obligation. Now, that's an entirely separate problem. We need smart negotiators who serve the interests of American workers. Now Wall Street, this, this is all bubkiss. Just throw this sentence out. In fact, throw this whole paragraph out. He's misdefining the problem. The problem is that in America, and this has always been true, okay? See, because he doesn't know anything about China. He doesn't know anything about our foreign policy. The big problem America has always had in its China policy is that we're ambivalent. We are in love with China. We have always been in love with China. We got that from our missionaries who went over there during the Boxer Rebellion. If you do not know that, if you don't know the history, then you can't understand you know, the whole dynamic. The Chinese love and hate us at the same time, too, for the same reason. We went over there and we fell in love with China. There's not a single American who's gone over to China who didn't fall in love with it. And well, some of them really complain about the food and the, the living conditions. But that's what you do if you're an American. You grew up hearing all these wonderful stories and Pearl Buck and all the rest of it. And so when you went over there, you were, you know, enraptured. And the Chinese feel the same way about America. The very word for America in Chinese, Meiguo, means beautiful country. Mei means beautiful. Guo means country. Hopefully my tones are still okay. I learned Mandarin like 40, 50 years ago, 40 years ago. Okay? That's what America means to China. China's name is Zhongguo. Zhong means middle. Center, center of the universe, center of the earth. Middle country is China's own name for itself. Meiguo means America. Beautiful country. Mei means beautiful. So the love-hate relationship is very, I don't know, emotional between the United States and China and kind of always has been because our first contact with each other came through the missionaries. And they fell in love with China the minute they saw it. You can't not. You just can't. There are two countries on earth that the minute you walk into them, you just fall in love with them. Russia and China. You can argue the same thing about Africa, really, if you extended it enough. That's the way we are. So this ding dong doesn't have first clue about that. Just, just like throw that whole paragraph out. Okay, now watch. The goal of the Trump plan fighting for American business and workers. Well, okay, fine, but that fight doesn't go to China. If you're going to fight for American business and workers, you're not fighting China about it. It's not China's, how do you want to call it? China is not the United States. Can we make this clearer? 
If there's a problem with American business and workers, that's not China's problem. That's our problem. Okay, so now look. America has always been a trading nation. Under Trump administration, trade will flourish. Says who? How will trade flourish? He's, he's given us no plan to justify that statement. It's just, you know, it's kind of like a guy sidling up to you at the bar saying, Hi, honey, if you go out with me, I'll show you a really good time. You have no proof that that's going to happen. You don't know if he's going to rape you. This is a stupid statement. However, for free trade to bring prosperity in America, it must also be fair trade. Now, what's really interesting is that it's America who is famous in history for raising what are called tariffs. In other words, if you're going to import, and the famous example is oranges from Brazil. You know, when I was taking economic classes, because like Trump, I majored in economics. Okay, when I was taking ec economics classes, they had a long section on Brazil's tariffs and the tariffs of the United States. And the idea was if you import oranges from Brazil rather than California, then the U.S. said, okay, well, the oranges are cheaper in Brazil, but we don't want that because the oranges in California are more expensive. So we're going to have, if you bring in 20 cent oranges from Brazil, but your average orange is 50 cents in L.A., well, then you got to pay another 30 cents so that the orange that's coming in from Brazil is 50 cents and the orange that's coming from L.A. is 50 cents. The extra 30 cent difference is called a tariff. All right? So free trade basically means, hi, we want to make sure that our indigenous costs are on par with anything imported. And his argument here is saying Chinese goods that are coming into the United States are too cheap relative to American goods, so we're going to somehow insist on fair trade for Chinese goods, meaning that the Chinese goods have to be higher in price, meaning really some kind of tariff, some kind of like extra 30 cents you put on Brazil oranges so they'll be equal to California oranges, all right? By the way, California oranges are much better than Florida oranges. Anyway. Our goal is not protectionism, but accountability. What? That's not relevant. America fully opened its markets to China, but China is not reciprocating. Its Great Wall of Protection uses unlawful, see, Tariff and non-tariff barriers to keep American companies out of China and tilt the playing field in their favor. What would you expect it to do? That's what a nation is supposed to do. China has a billion people. Okay? It can't, I, I'm sorry, not every country on the planet can be unadulterated capitalism and not every country on the planet can be a democracy. When you got a billion people who are really, you know what, they came out of the Stone Age just this, this past century, you know, the 20th century, that's when they came out of the Stone Age. And we're not appreciating how difficult that was. You can't sit there when they don't have an industry at our level and say, well, you're not allowed to charge a tariff. They have to. So, see, Donald Trump just doesn't understand anything about China. He doesn't understand anything about, you know, policy or anything else. It's great wall of protectionism. He doesn't understand the history of Japan, that Japan went through this and they had to go through it really fast. This is just totally unfair. What, you know, we should not have done any agreement with China like this in the first place. This was totally wrong for a lot of reasons. And I've shown you some. But you, you don't fix it by saying, well, you can't do this. This is what we said to Brazil. And we lost Brazil as a result. This was back in the 1960s with Brazil. There was a guy named Golart. 
And that's basically what he ended up doing in order to protect Brazil is he set up a lot of tariffs. And, you know, he's he had to do basically what China's doing now. This is wrong. Just, just flat wrong. Trump doesn't know the first thing about the problem. He has no appreciation of it whatsoever. I'm not saying we should play footsie with China. A lot of me wants to just cut off relationships altogether, except that they're coming out of their communism phase. But you don't, you don't do this that he's talking about in, in blue. It can't be done. China's industry and China's goods are not yet at the level they need to be in order for there to have no protectionism. He's not appreciating the problem of a country. We had 200 years to modernize, and we had a whole industrial revolution to do it in. China didn't go through that. China's only had since 1949. You can't expect it to accomplish since 1949 what we did over 200 year period. That's not fair. Okay. So then, then he just, he, this is totally non sequitur. If you give American workers a level playing field, they will win. To bring fairness to our trade, you can't just, just, win. What an arrogant son of a bitch. When Donald J. Trump is president, China will be unnoticed that America is back in global leadership. This is just all hot air, okay? It, 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 you know what the Chinese would do with this? They'd laugh. They've been here for 3,000 years and we're only 200 years old. They're just going to laugh. That's the way they look at it. They like us, but they don't like this. Okay, under a Trump administration, absolutely nothing will get accomplished with China. If anything, it might actually finally prompt China to take over Taiwan. And then we will have cost the world millions of Chinese lives. Because the one thing holding Taiwan together is that we're very gentle in our policy toward both Chinas. George Herbert Walker Bush was a China expert before he became CIA head, before he became VP under Reagan. He understood this. Of course, this is also my specialty in school. I was going to be a diplomat and I was going to specialize in China. Couldn't really decide if it was China or Latin America. Okay? This is the absolute stupidest thing that any president can, could say. What he's saying here. First of all, it's all chutzpah. It's all hot air. There's no details. There's no proof that he could ever bring anything to process. But this thing here tells you that he doesn't even understand this problem. He has no respect, no understanding, no nothing. It's like he's the bully in the schoolyard. You know, China just doesn't view this kind of thing well. Okay. Have they done a lot of nasty things? Yeah, they did. They have. Okay? They love us and they hate us. The same thing is true for Russia. They love us and they hate us. In Russia, there's a lot more love than hate because Arm and Hammer bailed out the Russian government at least three times that I could go back and count. All right? And there have been many friends of China that have been white. And China knows that. You really, really just love them. Edgar Snow, um, he, that, that just came to mind, I guess you wanted me to know that. Okay, the Rye Showers, of course, that was more Japan. Theodore White, I mean, the, the, America's love affair with China is, is patent. And they return it. So they're very sort of like forgiving with us. But you get a jackass like Trump in there, and China will just close its doors. Okay? This is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. China is not like the Muslims. With the Muslims, you got to talk tough and be nasty. You really do. That's what they appreciate. That's what they respect. China doesn't respect this kind of talk. 
they respect, uh, how do you want to call it? They respect respect. And they deserve it. Jerk. Okay, I can't even go any farther. You can read this if you want. This isn't going to work. At a, nothing what he says is half. Bring China to the bargaining table immediately by declaring it a currency manipulator. Well, yeah. They're playing with the market basket, but there are better ways to accomplish it than rattling your sabers. This works with Muslims. It does not work with the Chinese. This guy has no understanding of a different people and their history and their needs. Just just throw him out. You want World War III? Elect Trump. Okay? Protect American ingenuity and investment by forcing China to help. You can't do this. Forcing China? How do you force China to uphold intellectual property laws? How do you force them? What? Go to The Hague? The International Court of Justice? By the UN? Which will say, all China? Slap on the wrist. You're a naughty boy. You took some intellectual property. And everybody say, oh, China is bad. China will just sit there, yeah, I'm bad, too bad. You can't force China. What do you want to do, go to war? Okay? It ain't going to work. And it isn't only China that's guilty of whatever he's accusing. So if you're gonna if you're gonna accuse China, how about accusing like the French, the Germans, especially the Arabs, the other Asian peoples? It's not only the Chinese. I mean, there's there are better ways to handle this than that. So he's just a, he's just just throw him out, throw him out. Reclaim millions of jobs and move reviving American manufacturing by putting an end to China's illegal export subsidies. And how are you going to do that? See, he's talking like he was king over China. He's not. They got a 200 million standing army. He ain't getting nowhere with them. This guy's just, I don't know. Is he on crack? See, you know, the Trump people who favor Trump say, oh, he's great. You should vote for him. The reason I'm not voting for him, dummy, is because the man's stupider than shit. And you can be dumb and make money. Clearly he is. Strengthen the negotiating position by lowering our corporate tax rate. Honey, if you lowered it to zero, that wouldn't be good enough because the differential in the living standard between China and us is too great. Okay? that I, I forget what it is. I could be wrong. But I want to say that the average Chinese worker makes like 400 yuan a month. That's something like $20. What's the exchange rate? Let's find out. Y-U-A-N. 15 cents. Okay? So, that's 100. So, we 15 cents. We got 400 yuan a month times 15. $60 a month. Oh, well, standard of living has gone up. The average worker makes $60 a month. That's $500 a year. Your cable bill is more than that. Your cell phone bill is more than that. How is there going to be a lowering of, how is the lowering of the corporate tax rate going to equalize wages enough? Unless you want to go back to the Stone Age like China's is essentially still living in. You have no idea how horrible their lives are. Okay? It's just awful. They're basically now, with certain changes because we gave away secrets. They're basically now kind of where Carnegie was 
at the turn of the 20th century, at the turn into the 20th century. Their foundries, their mechanisms, their ways of doing things are very much like America at the turn of the 20th century with, with far less, I don't want to call it quality. They have really learned a lot very quickly. This guy, he's just, forget them, forget him. Amer attacking our debt and deficit so that China cannot use, how are we going to attack our debt and deficit? It's called a balance of, it's called an imbalance of payments. Okay, that's the real name for it, and he doesn't even understand the right terminology. Imbalance of payments means that we import a whole bunch of stuff from China, let's say it costs $100. We export stuff to China, let's say it costs $50. So we owe China $50 more dollars than we exported. How are you going to attack that? There's only one way, stop buying stuff from China. But he's talking about blaming China for this. It's not China's fault. It's our fault. Let's stop buying. Okay, the worst thing, you want to talk about something bad? Let's stop buying from China. That ain't going to happen. At least, 50, I mean, every computer that's that's made is mostly made in China. Uh-oh. See, this is ridiculous. All right? So, I tell you what. You read the rest of this as you want, but I hope you realize by now, this guy is non compass mentis. This should not even be a number one issue with him. He, he knows like two thimblefuls worth of things about it. Like he can say China, and he knows the word tariff. Little knowledge is dangerous. Do not elect Donald Trump unless you want World War III. Peace out.